So if you're not a smoker like cigarettes, you're not my friend. If you're not drinking alcohol, you're not my friend. If you're not a whore, you're not my friend. If you're not straight talking, you're not my friend. You have to be straightforward. I mean, really. That nothing that hurts in a person is being fake and who pretends that they are okay with you at the same time that they're being backstabbers. So I call them unholy sluts. Yep. Uh, I'm Shane Sinclair. Um, born in Cape Town. Shane Sinclair, the diva darling, remember that. I was born in um, Hanover Park in 1985. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm almost like this happy person, free-spirited person. So yeah, that's just be me. My life is fabulous. <laughs> I don't have any problems. Um, I'm living a free life. I'm a crazy person. Not even crazy like in psychologically, no. If it's not crazy, it's a no-no. I'm as crazy as loving crazy stuff. Like crazy friends, party a lot. My love life, I love my three sons, I love my four sons. Crazy about sex. I can't loyal to my lover and everything, but at the same time, do you know, sometimes you just need to feel, you need to taste something different. I even sometimes disappear for three weeks or a month or something. I party my tail off. I don't swing both ways. Strictly men, strictly dig. <laughs> If a person who hurts a person just took it back for one minute and started realizing what if it was your child by taking a life away from a person just like that. Big social butterfly, love alcoholic, used to love men. Thank <laughs> God I'm taken. I started out as a drag queen. We used to love clubbing. Party! We don't do fake. If you're fake, honey, you're not part of the crew. Get out. There was Bronx. Sliver, Manhattan Cafe, Rosie's, and Angels. We were just being us, being the divas. <sighs> Do you know? Every weekend, or ladies' night, we would dress up. And I used to love my heels. I still wear them now and then occasionally. <laughs> and my dresses, oh my God. And the works. We were drinking and partying, just oh my God. And they would have gossip with girls, my daughter. Like, a baggy pudding, Sana. Ooh, did you know? Stuff like that. And we used to love karaoke as well. But when we're done with the gay side of the gay village and we go to Club Snap, oh, Club Snap was rocking. And obviously, I was the best singer in the crew. <laughs> <laughs> Give you a blowjob. Tell me when you're coming. When you're coming, go outside. Coop, coop, clap, coops. And there we go. Oh my god, I've done it all. <laughs> My first lover. Whew, that's complicated. No. I mean, really, honey? No. <laughs> no. Whew. It's complicated. I don't know if we're going to say the name, but it's complicated. The story. It's... No, no, no. Uh, no. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> it could ever take it. A love life is crazy. Everything just has to be real. It just goes like bam, boom, bam, bizarre. And there you go. It's just like, damn, there you go. We're mad about each other. We're crazy about each other. Do you know when a person says something to you and you just get turned on? A love life is perfect. I love my man so far. And I'd do anything in the world to be with him. He is obsessed. And the way he smiles at you and the way he just caresses you. All my lovers are obsessed. For this one, he told himself he's here to stay. And the way he walks, certain stuff, man, do you know? It just, it just brings out the wild animal out in you. Joe was involved with this friend of mine, who was a drag queen, Blondie, from 124. I was at A109 on that night. Out the blue, this guy came in like, Blondie, who is that dude? No, she's my boyfriend. Like, okay, fine. <laughs> Suddenly, Blondie came up to me, Shane, my boyfriend wants us to have a threesome. Like, hell! 
No. I'm not going to do threesomes at all. And in fact, I'm sleeping over here. So I'm not going to do threesomes with you guys. I'm very sorry. Count me out. Blondie insisted. Blondie insisted. Blondie insisted. Okay, fine. I finally gave in. We left. And as nervous as a bloody am, it's like, oh my god, am I really doing this blood threesome situation? Reality checked in and kicked into my head, like, yes, Jane, you are. <laughs> Blondie decided not to join in. I have to stay on it on my own. You fucked me crazy. Riding me the fucking whole night until the fucking next day. Yo, I was like, any plan is that OTP to see, see, my love, who got, you got IB? Police is an offender on the police, right? No matter who over type business, I'm a victim. I'm like, you bitch. Whoever called me, oh yeah, I could app her. The next day, Blondie got cold. I got hot. Blondie's affair was over. Joe didn't want to let go of me now. <laughs> I'm like, come on, dude. You gotta be kidding me. Third day. Me and Joe hooked up again. Now things became a bit serious. Blondie was like totally, literally out the picture. And here I am, Joe's new lover. So if Blondie was over me, it was on. So ever since you were dating, <laughs> until now. You do it. As quiet as I was in school, people would think I'm not gay. As deep inside, I was so gay. You can see from my actions, I was so gay. My whole family loved me since I was like a puppy. I never had a problem now, but my sexuality. Um, they understand me. Um, they love me unconditionally. They support me through everything I'm going through, for who I am, and yeah, for what I am. My ma, <laughs> die damn fro. <laughs> oh Lord. Beatrice Josephs, Ma van Tweekenis, Shinville Josephs, in Shane St. Clay. He was a baby, a sister to Austin. He used to have a sister, but from a different father. I used to love each other like crazy though. Beauty was a mouth of makeup geweest, first of all. Wa kleere, hara, moet up to date wees die skoene, die rokke, die outward party weekends works, nachi moet daar wees. She was a player. And a good damn player. Now, many people say I'm like more like my mum. Wild crazy. Love crazy love, love a, a happy life. My mom and dad separated. I'm not sure what year was that. They separated. They were on a process of divorcing. And my mom became this wild, crazy party animal. Honestly, I could rather say I stand on my own. I'm a strong, independent bitch. Me, my mom and my sister were never close. But we, just, we, 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 we knew who she was and we loved her dearly, regardless of anything else. You would see her like once in a month. So my father used to have lots of girlfriends that passed it. And I was like, 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 and in Chagasli, and Chagasli. And it's like a son daughter son situation. We just want to kill each other sometimes, you know? And uh, we just like hug and kiss next time. The next thing, like, okay, uh, sorry, Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shane. Should I buy you a drink? Was that hand? Got no choice. Come on, this is I can come in. The creation I can. As I became a bit older, um, my father was dating this woman and um, they'd stayed together so obviously my father wanted want me to be with him. I didn't like her at first. Ugh, it was terrible. Awful. Anyway, 
I came to to love her at the end of the day because she taught me she taught me tough love, which is good, thank God. She taught me how to handle pain, how to handle hurt. Then my mom passed away. Oh Lord. The day was a dood gun. Uh, was it that was like, oh my god, I just lost a fucking mom here. It was like my whole world has fallen apart. It just caved in. Oh fuck, I was like, yeah, 1999. I was like, I lost, obviously, I lost someone who gave life to me. Beat is weg. My life is done. And then my aunt. What word is that? I can't believe she's sick. But HIV positive. I can't believe it. She could understand it. She could not accept it, and she passed away as well. Then my sister. They were planning this family with a boyfriend. Boyfriend passed away. The time when she was ready to tell her boyfriend she's pregnant. Boyfriend passed away. Results came back, it was HIV positive. She became infected to try to prevent it for the baby, but the baby came out of the being positive as well. My sister could not understand it either. They wasn't as strong as I was. She also passed away. You gotta be kidding me right now. Oh God, what can I sing? I remember Mama in a happy ways. I remember Mama in a happy ways. She packed a lunch in it all crazy bag. We didn't have empty, but it was more what Lord has had. Mama kept the family oh, all together. Yes, it is. I remember Mama in a happy ways. I remember Mama in a happy ways. Singer, drama queen, and my Jesus Lord, have mercy on me. Lots more. <laughs> In townships, wherever I go, wherever I set my foot on, it's just been fabulous. People understand me, people know me, people respect me, which I love the most. And I keep on asking myself sometimes, what on earth have I done to deserve the kind of respect from people out there? I mean, honestly, my life is smooth. I have no complaints at all. I'm the most friendly gay person around here and I'm very popular. Everybody knows me because of a menace and um, just for who, I'm, for who I am. And um, I connect with everybody, all type of characters out there. I'm just free flowing. There was never discrimination against me or a hey, you faggot, a hey, or something like that, no. And I, I wish I could say the same for other people out there who are gay and lesbians that could have the type, the, type of, the type of treatment I have are done in townships. At a certain time in Kylie, your transport is running out very early. Around six to seven, there's no more time public transport running around. So it's very difficult to get yourself home easily and home safely. Yeah. So we have to walk and have to sacrifice. So at the same time, around the neighborhood, it's very, very dangerous all over the place. I was going through my mom when I'm walking at night. Music. Whitney Houston. My seaweed. Walk in smoke, thinking, what am I going to do? For example, if I have money, okay, I go for a drink, and now I'm going to have so much fun. Maybe I'm going to call a friend of mine to join me. Why do I go to Tara's house? Maybe blah, 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 you know? Happy thoughts. I'm just like, okay, what is going to happen to me is going to happen. To me. But I'm on the road right now. End of story. Sometimes I want to get robbed, but sometimes I do get away with it. But I end up being safe. 
I was coming out with a friend of mine's, and there was a few houses that were empty. So the owners of those houses, they, they weren't ready to move in the house because the house was not completed yet. And um, I had a drink, a last drink actually. And um, on my way home, I never realized I was followed by eight guys. Do you know? So, later it was, these guys came from behind me, looked around, what the hell? And I realized something, I don't know these people, I know everybody around this neighborhood, which are my neighbors. I never saw those guys, and I started counting in my head, like, oh my god, these guys are eight. As... Oh God, it's a rough at the world on me. They starting to beat me up. Taking off my pants. Maybe they thought I was a girl or something, so they discovered, oh my God, it's a, it's a boy. So, they done some terrible stuff to me. Wow. <sighs> they take turns on me. Screamed. <sighs> oh, Lord. Ah, they force themselves on me. Dicks in my mouth and the works and everything. I was bleeding. Back for mercy, but now my God, they haven't shown any remorse. They were swearing at me. They were cursing at me. They were saying stuff that hurt me so deeply. So I was about like 11, 12. For growing up to say stuff like that to, to a kid, it really hurts. A fucking bitch of a gay fucking son of a bitch and stuff and everything. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Do you know that stuff are haunting you for life? And it's, there's more. They were swearing, they were saying some cruel stuff. Every time I talk about it, just makes me sick. Some, some few of them want to stab me, but luckily one of the guys just like, no guys, don't. So they were finally done with me. Left me there bleeding. God, um face was a bit sewn up. My underneath, my behinds and everything was fucked up. I functioned properly in the works and uh, I, I remember not going home that day because I was too scared to go home. I was a mess, a wreck of a mess. I was I was very confused. I was I was out of my mind. I was devastated. I went to a friend of mine, Mani. Everything was bleeding all over, my clothes were torn up and everything. I was in pain. I told her what happened. She was in deep shock. When you're in that state, honey, you are like scared. We don't know what to do. All, we do. all you have to do is just pray to get out of it alive. And that feeling... <laughs> Whew. God. Oh Lord. Right now... I feel like crap. <laughs> I feel like crap. <laughs> and I don't know what to do about it. I feel so crap. <laughs> so anyway, the next day I went to 
day clinic to check my blood and the works and I got counselling. I had to talk about it, I don't know how hard it was, I cried. Because what they did to me was bloody sick. I talk about it and I'm proud of myself that I'm living and I'm still alive. I got the results. Came out positive. At first, I could not deal with it. I mean, I like, take my blood and the works and everything. Like, you check it out my scrolling, my scrolling account and it works. It's no shame. Recently, we all have it. We all not have it or might not have it. So I count back. It's sixteen years now. And trust me, I stayed at Mainy's house again for a week. Up and down for counselling, up and down for counselling. The more I talked about it, it made me stronger. It gave me hate. Now, the time I got hate, it made me fierce. It created this person you know today. It created a cold monster somehow, somewhere in me. That time, I had to go tell my parents about my status. I went to go take a test, and obviously, I came back and I'm made to be positive. It wasn't easy, but I know I have to break the ice. I told them they were supportive, shocked, not disappointed in me because they haven't asked for it in the first place. They were supportive, consoling me. Do you know how, the, you know how parents are? To be, you become like their little puppy. Do you know? And Really, to be honest, I hated it because I want to be more strong. Every day of my life, a little something of my life, especially when it comes to my body parts, it's becoming like this huge worry situation. It gives us weird stuff from your skin, do you know? Mm. Which irritates. Like scratching the words, because a rash. Mm. The next thing you have a pimple and you scratch. Oh my god, what do you call it? Shingles. Shingles. Oh! That's like hell, baby. Uh -huh. I'm not ready to die yet. Oh my god, seriously, I am not ready. Oh hell no, sweetie. I want to see the demons <laughs> going down, baby. Yeah, I've been to the clinical situations and dealing with doctors in situation telling me I don't really need RVs. So I came to ask myself the question why. The only thing I felt like doing is, it was to study it, how to control it. I became this person who wanted to know what how, how do I deal with this? How do I live with this? How do I control it? How would it listen to me? And it got all my answers. I was angry at those who did this to me. I was angry at the virus I had. The one they gave me. Now that's the reason I'm so strong. I discovered a secret, how to live longer. Forget you have it. Take it as a buddy, it's part of you now. Take it as a baby, take care of it. Don't think about it, don't remind yourself, oh my God, I'm gonna die, oh my God. Don't be a panic freak. The more you do that, the longer you live. And that's how I survived it for 16 years. I'm proud of myself. Not using a condom, it's not in my business. And in fact, to spread it was not part of the plan. It never will be. If it's not condom, masturbate. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh my god, that was rude. There are people who are not using condoms out there. 
of being silly and stupid and being horny, so to say this, <laughs> horny, I can't give an innocent person what I have. I can't, he's wrong. Okay, Shane, stop, wait. Listen. Let's talk to me now. Shane, talk to Shane. On your own. What you really up to? What do you want in life? Do you know? I got friends, I got family who kiss me dearly. So who the hell am I? Am I? Who the hell am I actually? Just throw that away. We gonna meet each other on the chairs. Is that I always say? Mm -hmm. Do you know? At the end of the day. It's life, dear. They hate gay people, they can't stand gay people. But when the sun goes down, lights all God. Now they come. <laughs> when Judy decides it's time to turn on the lights, now the cockroaches run all over the place. What the hell do they want from us? It's our asses for Christ's sake, leave us alone. Jesus. There's cookies down there, leave us alone. <laughs> We're involved. Oh. I've been so many places in my life and time. And I sung a lot of songs and made some fair rhymes. I'm laughing stages. What I thought I'd be even watching. Well, yeah, right now, and I'm singing a song to you. I know you're in with me. Who was a hope to be? I treat you unkindly, my darling, can't you see? I thought it would not be important to me, be back in the seat to me. And here right now, and I'm singing a song to you.